Hello! So in this video, we're going to expand off of our work in the last one where we had our first custom component. Uh, and this time, we're going to show what it's like to dynamically add new objects and new components to a scene in A-frame after it's already started. Um, and so just kind of recap what we have so far, right? We've added this color toggle that we've attached to our cylinder, which when you click on it, it does a ray cast event, um, or it ray casts into it and does a click event that we can hear um, using our event listener and then respond to it by doing something to the object. We changed the color of it in this instance. Um, and we showed that we could add it to a couple of other objects, but we're gonna leave it on just the cylinder for the time being, just so that our, our whole scene doesn't turn into this, this red monstrosity. Um, so let's come back over to our code. And where we're gonna start is by making a new component. Uh, so we, we have our script for color toggle. Um, so we're gonna make a new one and we're gonna call this one target marker dot js uh, and we're going to add this file and then we're going to follow the same syntax we had from the last one where we do this register component uh, we're going to give it the the name for the component we actually want to pass in so we're just going to duplicate what we said for our file name which was target dash marker uh, and then we have this curly brace because we're passing in a javascript object now um, and this is where we start defining our init function uh, so it's going to look relatively similar, uh, at the start at least, to the last time, because we're, we're still, well, the, the plan for this component, right, is what if we could go into our scene and anytime we do a ray cast to a specific object, we put a little sphere right there um, to show that we clicked at that specific spot. You know, imagine like you, you were doing some type of dexterity activity where you're trying to click on a target or something. So let's, let's have some way of actually being able to mark that location with a target marker. And so where we want to start with this is the, the same kind of format we had before where we do uh, let el equal this.el because um, we want to capture a reference to the entity that this component is placed on. And then uh, we want to define a, a new function. Uh, so we want to add this time, we're going to define a function called this.addMarker. And this is going to happen every time... Uh, we have a click event. That's what we're going to listen for is a click event again. Uh, but this time we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to see what the, when, when an event happens in, in your browser, uh, there's actually details that are passed through associated with it. So the last time we didn't really use any of that information, but this time we're going to actually capture the location of where the raycast intersection occurred with the object that was being clicked on. And so we'll just use the variable name E here, but you could, of course, do anything you want for this. Uh, just E to be shorthand for event. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is specify a point. So we want to capture the, the details of this event. So we'll say let p equal e.detail. So this is accessing the event details. And then this specific event as a raycast click has a uh, property called intersection that we want to capture. And so this intersection object then also has a property called point. Uh, and so this point... Uh, is another object. So we have this whole hierarchy of objects associated here, right? Uh, this last one being a point that has an X, Y, and Z value that are all number type. Um, if you're curious about how I know all of this, this is, again, you just you have to just know these things when you're trying to access this object details. Um, in this specific case, you can go look at the object, the, uh, the documentation on A-Frame's website. Um, it's quite extensive. It gives you plenty of information about all of these types of things. Um, but that's how you know that you can access this intersection dot point for this. Um, so we're going to capture this in our P, um, which will now just have the X, Y, Z values of where this raycast hit something in our 3D scene. The next thing we want to do is actually get a reference to the scene element. And there's a couple ways of doing this, but the way we'll do it this time is that uh, in the entire script, you have this global variable called document. And this gives you a reference. I've been talking about the, the document object model this entire time. And so in any web application, you have a reference to the document object, um, which is at the top level of your entire web application. Um, it gives you a reference to these high level, this high level information. So from your document, it's basically like the, the top of the top of your entire web page um, in terms of hierarchy. Uh, and using this, you can do a function called query selector, um, which does a query of everything in, within this uh, document. Um, and we specifically are looking for a dash scene. 
Um, and this goes off of the actual names of the tags. So you could do a query selector for like paragraph tags or for like a dash box if you want to. Uh, but because we know there's only one a dash scene, we're gonna grab that reference through this function call. Um, and that brings up another important point about a frame uh, and a scene. You can only have one a dash scene tag per web page. Um, because what's actually happening under the hood when you you know when you want to have a VR application, you can't have multiple VR applications running at the same time. Um, and A-Frame relies on this assumption that there is only one A-scene in a singular web page. Um, so this is kind of a, a guarantee we can have here um, and something that you have to enforce by your own means. And so now we have a reference to the scene. And the next thing we want to do is create a new element. Um, and so we'll, we'll have this variable name, we'll say let new mark, uh, and then we'll do document and call create element is the specific function we need. And what we pass into this is the, the, the tag that we specifically want, the type of element we want. So we'll do a dash entity here. Um, and again, we're using our reference to our document here to create this element. Um, so now we have this empty entity uh, it doesn't actually even exist in the scene yet. It hasn't been attached to anything. So we just have this entity that just exists purely in JavaScript at the moment. Uh, but we're going to set a couple attributes, a couple properties, uh, a couple components. They're kind of those, those terms are all a little bit interchangeable here um, for this specific entity. So the first thing we want to do is set the geometry of it. So I mentioned before that A-Frame has these primitive shapes uh, like a box, a uh, a sphere, things of that sort. Um, but what's actually happening under the hood is that they're all just actually entities that have these other components attached to them, these other properties that specify this kind of primitive information. So we can instead have just an empty entity and attach a geometry component to it. And then with that geometry component, what we're specifying is a JavaScript object that gives the specifics of this, uh, this geometry. So um, we have primitive, uh, as the property we're setting. And then within that, we are specifying it's a sphere. So we want to have these little spheres get added in. Um, the, the next thing we're going to do, uh, and also talking more about what's, what's actually happening under the hood of um, these more complex operations, uh, is likewise, instead of specifying a color, which is a useful shorthand, you can specify a material. So if you had like a more complex texture or you had a couple different pieces of a material you wanted to put together, you can specify a material component. And then with that, you can pass in, um, we're showing another version of the syntax here, uh, like specify the color for that material be red. Um, so we've kind of seen two different ways that you can specify attributes here. You can either pass in this JavaScript object if you had more complex uh, components you were attaching, you had a lot of data associated with them and you wanted to kind of format it this way, um, or you can just kind of specify it as a string in of itself um, passed in with it. Uh, and they both work, but if you're doing more complex operations, you generally want to follow the syntax of actually passing in a full object. Um, the next thing we want to do for this is uh, you know, we've seen what the default size of a sphere normally is. It's a, it's a little large. So actually we're gonna set a scale component um, and we have the ability to set that scale in all X, Y, Z axis. So we'll shrink it down to a fifth the size. Um, and the last thing we wanna set for this is the position, right? So the, the whole point of this was to place this new sphere wherever this raycast occurred. So we'll specify a position uh, and then we'll give in our variable p that we captured from the actual event details. And the last piece we have for this is that uh, we actually need to add this object into the scene, this entity with all of its accompanying components now. Um, and to do that, we have our reference to the A-frame scene, the A-scene, and we're gonna put this in the hierarchy underneath it. There's, there's, you could add it instead as a child of, um, the, the actual entity that this component's on, but we're gonna put it underneath the, the scene just because we have a reference to that. Um, and we'll, we'll show you kind of a little bit different in a moment here. Um, but we'll do that uh, append child and we're adding in this new element. And so that will actually add it into the scene. Um, and so the last thing we have to do here uh, is do the same process of adding this event listener in. Um, so we'll do add event listener, we're listening for click. And then we'll do this dot add marker as the function that should occur 
when that click event happens. Um, and then we're going to specify our remove lifecycle function. Uh, you know, again, mentioning that every time you have an event listener that gets added, it's just good uh, practice to also remove that event listener. In in this specific scenario, it, it's not going to cause any um, major ramifications, but it's just good practice to do this at all times um, because the the bigger scope, the more complex your applications get, the the more likely it is for this to cause you know uh, propagating issues. So. We have our remove lifecycle function. We remove the event listener in that. We add the event listener here. Um, and we have our add marker code. And so now what we have to do is go back to our HTML and don't forget to actually add the script in. So it's called target marker.js. And we'll close that script. And now, assuming everything, there's no typos, everything works, uh, we can take this target marker and we can add it as a component to any of our entities again, right? Um, just like we did for the color toggle. So we'll add it to the box. And we're at a point now where, uh, assuming, again, everything works, it's probably the most complex component we've written so far. Um, if we click on the box, we see we've got these spheres getting added. Uh, and so just like that, we've got this way of adding new spheres to the scene. Um, and so one really interesting thing here, uh, if we want to kind of build on top of this, so again, this this kind of the same property holds that this is, a, this is a generalized component. We could put it on anything. So we could add target marker to like our sphere um, and refresh the page there and click on the sphere. You'll see that uh, because we've got our little uh, cursor in the middle of the screen still doing a fuse timeout, if it hovers over the sphere for three seconds, it adds it to the sphere. Um, and of course it blocks it afterwards so it won't keep adding spheres. Um, but this is a pretty simple interaction and uh, you know it's already quite powerful what you could do with this information. You can have like a little target on your in your environment and click on this and add little uh, bullets to it or something. Um, but uh, an interesting thing here is just like we've been adding all these other components, uh, once this component is registered, it has the knowledge of itself. So um, this is just kind of getting a little bit out there and I don't know exactly why you'd want to do this, um, but something interesting to do is you could actually set attribute and then attach the target marker component um, to itself uh, and you know pass in an empty object because there's actually nothing being passed in with it. You don't need any information for this specific component. Um, and now if we refreshed again and we clicked on the sphere, if we click on that sphere, it adds a sphere to that sphere. So it, it's it's recursive, right? It's it's adding it instantly, um, including this kind of scenario where uh, because there's a fuse timeout every three seconds, you're adding a new sphere that gets closer and closer to the camera. Um, and you can kind of, you can almost turn this into an art tool at this point, right? Where you're now you're building off of your existing objects and you're kind of making this weird sphere thing. Um, and so that's uh, that's it for this, this section of the tutorial. Um, this is just to show you what it's like. Uh, it's quite simple to um, add in new objects into a scene. Um, and likewise, you know, adding adding components, custom components or any other components to an object like this. We've, we've defined our own component and attached that same component inside of its own code. Um, and that's how simple it is to do. And so in the next section, we're going to kind of take a twist and we're actually going to talk about what it's like to add animation to your components so that they can actually kind of move around the scene and do other things. Um, and that'll come up in the next video.